I'm not sure how Yale's love of pickles will help me crack the case, but it's good to know. A woman's fragrance. Almost angelical. He seems like a nice kid, but I, I barely know him. Hmm. century French fables. Mayor must be one boring old lady. The worst thing about O'Leary's boys dropping by isn't the beating, but the fact that I can't tell what's theirs and what's Yale's. Can't say this is the ideal drink for an athlete. Then again, it could be your classic bookie thug lunch. Judging by the general state of the apartment, they were leading a quiet life. Judging by the general state of the apartment, they were leading a quiet life. So, you like your mob stories, don't you, Bobby? Seems like Bobby inherited something more than boxing skills from his father, besides the tendency to vanish into thin air, of course. Nice chain. Relatives? Is his father ever, ever, Avenarius? Avenarius? The boxer poet? Didn't he disappear 20 years ago? Why would you want such a big closet for so few clothes?
Unless someone emptied it recently. She's been here recently, but why? What does Sweet Mary have to do with Yale, the murder suspect? I told O'Leary I hadn't found a thing. The minute I was alone, I left for Mary's. But before all that, I took a small parting gift for her. I've never trusted angels. Mr. Black's hat? What a... Surprise? When they fall, they turn into demons. Joey told me he was going to spend the afternoon painting the gym and that Bobby would be fixing something up on the roof. So, after I found the body and called the police, I went to Bobby's place, but he wasn't there. How did you open the door to his apartment? I think it was already open. Everything is so confusing. I'm sorry, Mr. Blacksad. Don't be. I'm here to figure it all out. What's your relationship with Bobby Yale? He was like a son to Joey, and we were about to get married, so, you know. Okay. I think it's time to set things straight. I knew you were cheating on Dunn with Yale. Or was it the other way around? No! How can you even think of something like that? How can you convince me otherwise? I found a picture at Yale's apartment. It's you and him on a roller coaster. Care to explain, Miss Purnell? I'm not white, Mr. Black said. What? Seven of my great-grandparents were white. The eighth was black. According to law, I'm a black citizen, even if my skin says the contrary. Do you know what that means when you're born in North Arlington, Alabama? Segregated restrooms, with far worse stalls for colored people. We even have different water fountains, for God's sake! The separate but equal doctrine and all that... That baloney. And all the lies. That's why I moved here. No one knows what color my great-grandparents were. I completely understand you, Mary. Just think if you were also a woman. He's my nephew, Mr. Black said. Joe and I first started taking care of poor Bobby when my sister died. That was when he was almost 15. The three of us went on that trip to Luna Park. So this is where Joe Dunn comes in. Bobby was the only one who knew about me and Joey. We were afraid that someone would use my past to ruin his career. It's not the first time I hear that story.
I'm sorry I accused you so lightly. Don't worry, I understand. TV and radio all in one. Where will these mad times lead us? Mary smells like... Actually, the whole room smells like a pie fresh out of the oven. So I can't identify any other fragrances. About Sonia Dunn and the ring. Well, I told her about you and Joe Dunn. I had no choice. And what did she say? I don't think she took it too well. But she might come to understand it. Maybe. But I'm not so sure you'll be able to keep my other secrets safe. Are you sure you don't know where your nephew is? I've looked everywhere. He's nowhere to be found. Don't worry. I'll find him. Thank you. That cherry pie smells so good. I'm starting to get hungry. Thanks. I pulled it out of the oven right before you arrived. Oh, where are my manners? I'm the worst hostess in the world. Let me go get a knife from the kitchen. And you must be thirsty. Uh, let me see. OJ? Coffee? OJ is fine, thanks. Feels good to stretch out now and then. Now that there's almost no pie left, the scent has also disappeared. Interesting. Now Mary smells like a huge dog. Mary, when are you going to stop lying? I know your nephew is here. I can smell him. What? No. I already told you I don't know where he is. Look, I understand why you're protecting him, but it's in his best interest to end this hide-and-seek. You can search the whole house if you want. Go ahead. He's not here. Wait a minute. 
She's not the one who smells like that. That's where Bobby Yale's scent is coming from. So, that's why you were sitting there. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Could you step aside so I can check, please? Please go. Mary, for Christ's sake, put that knife down, would you? Leave Aura. You don't have to do this, Mary. I mean it. I don't want to hurt you. Leave my alone! Bobby! Do as I say. Go on, call an ambulance. Do it now. In the face of a heart attack, there's two things you can't forget. One, stay calm. Two, one chest compression per second. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Four Mississippi. Five Mississippi. Six Mississippi. Bobby. Oh, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Thank you. I had lots of reasons to consider this a great day. I had investigated a suicide case. I had discovered that, in truth, we were dealing with a murder. I had found and captured the prime suspect. And I had saved a life. And yet, everything in me screamed that something was going wrong. Terribly wrong. Promise me, you won't take the law into your own hands. I'd like to think we're not just vigilantes. I want a gun! What the hell? Bang, bang, bang! A fair amount of violence, extortion, and casualty. I hate detectives.
Your destiny cash. That you, Smirnoff? You seem agitated. Nightmare? <sighs> How long have I been sleeping? I just got here. Anyway, why don't you go home? In his current condition, Yale's not going anywhere. Besides, we'll take it from here. Who is that? Can we trust him? I know how to pick my men, John. You? I'm not so sure. I asked you not to get involved, or at least give me a heads up. If I hadn't intervened, Bobby Yale could be dead. If you had warned me, maybe we could have avoided a heart attack. Anyway, what's done, is done. When... when exactly did you realize that he killed Dunn? Out of sheer curiosity. I'm a cop after all. To be honest... I'm not so sure Yale killed anyone. How about the motive? Any ideas? I know Dunn wanted to call the fight off after something Yale did, but I still don't know what. In any case, hopefully Yale will tell us more. Would you let me ask him some questions when he wakes up? I know you will, with or without my permission. So, I'd rather not feel betrayed. In exchange, drop by the station when you can. Your investigation could really help my men. Who, by the way, must be waiting for me to interrogate Mary Purnell. Boy, she was hard to pry from Yale's side. She's been through a lot in the past days. Be nice to her. Of course. In spite of it all, we're not just vigilantes. And as for you, go get some rest. God knows you need it. I will. Thanks for the advice. Tell the nurses to look at that face of yours. You look like a film detective in his last scene. I'm afraid this film isn't over yet. For your sake. I hope you're wrong. You're in charge now, officer. Okay. I'll send you relief in six hours. Understood? Doctor. Who are? Oh, detective. Congratulations. You fared pretty well against that kid. Better than most would have. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me. Do I look like I fared well to you? We, as a society, simply don't trust reptiles. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is our extended belief that there's logic to that distrust, that it's natural and well-founded. How's Yale? Is he awake? Oh yeah! Go check on him before he falls asleep again. 
Although, try not to bother him with too many questions. What's his current condition? Um, it's too soon to tell. He did have a heart attack, after all. Go away. I don't want to see you. The doctor told me to sleep. I rarely get to interrogate a suspect with his guard down in a place as quiet as this. Getting the chance to study his body language with no distractions is a rare gift. His heart rate is increasing. It could mean that he's lying, but it could also just be pure, unadulterated rage. He's looking straight at me. If he couldn't hold my stare, I'd think he's lying. But that's not the case. He's clenching his fist. A sign of contained anger. Clenched fist. Fast heart rate. Fixed stare. He feels some genuine rage towards me. I'm sorry you don't want to see me, but... I saved your life, son. Maybe my aunt feels gratitude. I certainly don't. Luckily, I just got my medication. I'll be snoozing soon. All right, I'll just cut to the chase. Who killed Joe Dunn? What? Are you trying to confuse me? Joe hanged himself. I know Dunn threatened to call off the fight. Why? How do you know that? I'm a detective. That was his anger talking. He never really meant it. That doesn't matter. Why was he so mad at you? What did you do? Nothing. Joe thought that... I wasn't training hard enough. That I was going to lose. Dunn was too short to hang himself with that rope. So... It's true? He was murdered. Alright. Let's just say that I... I believe you. The murderer killed Dunn with a chest expander and planted evidence to make us believe it was suicide. But he also left enough clues behind to make sure we found the true murder weapon. Then he put the chest expander box in your locker to frame you. Do you know anyone that twisted and who also happens to have a mo- I... I don't know. Desmond O'Leary certainly seems twisted enough. Did he have anything against Dunn? I'm not sure if they knew each other. At least not in person. About a month ago, Joe kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym. He was trying to give a business card to... Jake Ostiami. Yeah, exactly. Did Jake tell you about that? Something like that. Maybe it was... What am I saying? Jake could never pull off something like that. Nothing. Never mind. What about Frank Cassidy? Do you think he has a motive? Maybe. A few weeks ago, Joe took me to a boxing manager's association meeting. Headed by Cassidy. Yeah. He was obsessed with making it illegal for boxers to fight without a manager. Or without an associated manager. Everyone seemed to go along with it until Joe spoke up. He said that would lower us to mob status. 
that Cassidy had founded the association just to make money by monopolizing the sport. That made others think twice. And Cassidy ended up empty-handed. Poor Cassidy. What about Sonia Dunn? Sonia? I doubt it. She's odd, but she's his daughter. I've seen worse, believe me. Black Sad. I think I owe you an, uh... uh you know, my father disappeared when I was six, right after winning a fight. We never heard from him again. Do you know what that does to a kid? Who knows where I'd be if Joe Dunn hadn't been in my life. Even when I lost my way and put a gun to his head years later, he still took me under his wing and managed to steer me in the right direction. And now that he's gone, you're risking your life to find his murderer. Thanks. I'm just doing... The number of cigarette butts is inversely proportional to my hours of sleep. Ah, damn. The hands say a lot about what's going on inside a person. Footprints don't match. If Yale killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint or in different shoes. Jake, it's Blackside. I just wanted to... I have work to do, Joe. Call you later. Ronald, get on that ring! Thank 
Yale's medical report is right there. Mind if I take a look? Hmm, no, I don't think so, handsome. I'll take a pack of more of these, please. Honey, get me a pack of more of these for Mr. Handsome. What if you show me Yale's report, and I buy you dinner? You're handsome, all right. But I'm not stupid. I won't be able to read Yale's medical report if she's around. I won't be able to read Yale's medical report if she's around. Jerry Highfill. Long time no see. Blackside, I didn't want to wake you. How's the boy? Asleep. I hope he recovers in time for the fight. I got tickets! Although between you and me, he doesn't stand a chance. It'll be a fun bout, nonetheless. Not like this. God, this is boring. You want to smoke? Don't smoke or drink. No vice for me. Smoking's dirty. Alcohol goes straight to your head. And women, they're all just me. Well, everyone except mine. Are the odds against Yale that bad? The boy's talented, don't get me wrong. But stone is stone, you know? I bet half my pay, but you know, no vice for me. Are you sure about that? Not even one little vice? Nope. Between you and me, when someone gives in to vice, it's because something's missing. Something in their life just isn't right. I've got a good wife, a good job, a good house, a good TV, and a good hobby. Sports. Well, watching them, that is. 
What else do I need, eh? Black said, Vice is for losers. Man, I'm bored. You say you've got a good job, and yet you're bored. Well, it's just a figure of speech, really. I like my job. Is it boring? Yes, but I can entertain myself with a good fight or a football game. Well, watching them, that is. Well, I'm going back in. Is that eye movement normal? He seems restless. Should I tell someone? See, there's no fever whatsoever. He must be having a nightmare. Are you sure? Wouldn't you have nightmares too after what he went through yesterday? I know I sure wouldn't sleep. I have nightmares myself, but those go way back. Oh, the poor thing. Do you know what my nightmare is? It's that, that witch I have to work with. Oh, good thing she's got trauma surgery at 12.30, but I wish it were a little sooner, you know? Anyway, thank you for letting me know, and, and, and for bringing him in. You don't know how excited I am to be involved in a criminal case. It might not be important, but I need to take a look at his medical report. Seems like the Doe nurse will be assisting Dr. Talbot during his 12.30 surgery. In four hours. Could I get them to operate any sooner? Get Dr. Gregor Talbot, please. Yes, one minute. Um, no, actually, Dr. Talbot won't be in until 12.30, according to my registry. Can I ask who's calling, please? Sherry, this is Dr. Talbot. We have to reschedule the 12.30 procedure. I want everyone in the operating room in five minutes. If anyone gives you any grief, tell them it's a matter of life or death. 
Understood. A matter of life and death. A matter of life and death. You gotta be kidding me. Guess why I'm giving it to you. You want to help me solve a criminal investigation. Well, aren't you smart? But be quick about it. You hear me, huh? If that witch comes back. It say here? Ah, oh, you know doctors. The top handwriting is mine. Let's see. Extra systole and dehydration caused by panic attack. Extra what? You know, arrhythmia, like skipped heartbeats. What about this here? It's a good thing I know that Mr. Yale is in Dr. Ferguson's hands. Otherwise, I'd be worried. Hey, no means no, miss. You really don't know who I am, do you? Miss, I've got orders. And the fact is, those orders say that- There you are, Miss Dunn. Huh? Tell him, Black Sad. I can't get through that thick skull of his. You see, Highfill, She's the owner of Yale's gym. A woman? Whether the kid recovers or not depends entirely on her. Between you and me, and all due respect, miss, but aren't we taking this woman's liberation a little too far? All right, let her in, but she's your responsibility. Thanks for convincing the cop. You hired me to find Yale. I wanted you to see him with your own eyes. I see. Anyway, you did your job. I'll send you a check the day after the fight. You can leave now. Oh, no. She's gonna do something stupid. Sonia, don't. You killed my father! You said so yourself! Well, now I think he didn't. Sonia, I have reasons to believe he's innocent. He almost killed you in that floozy's apartment. How could he not be guilty? You can't take justice into your own hands. Believe me, it will haunt you as long as you live. Shut up! None of that matters! How could he not be guilty? Your father wouldn't want you to do this. He was a just man, and this is not justice. <sighs> it's okay. <clears throat> Uncle Tim! Sweetie, I came back from Los Angeles as soon as I could. I told you not to rush back. Come on now, honey. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? No, this is John Blacksad, the detective who found Bobby. Oh, so this is strictly professional. Come on, we'd better let him rest. Hmm. I see. 
Let's say you're right and Bobby Yale is innocent. Who should we focus on now? We? Well, your father turned down my money, but he made me promise one thing, that I'd take care of you if anything happened to him. But I can... I know you're perfectly capable of managing that gym on your own, but we don't even know if he'll be ready to fight Stone. Besides, someone seems really invested in stopping that fight, and someone has to pay Mr. Blacksad to get to the bottom of all this. Please, talk some sense into her. Your uncle is right. Your father wouldn't have wanted you to go through this alone. See? Listen to the detective. All right. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you so much. All right. Stop crying or you'll ruin your makeup, honey. Now fix yourself up and I'll buy you some breakfast. Uh, wait. My purse. I'll get it. It must Black be... Black said, wait a minute. I think she needs some time alone. Just like you and me. Listen, boy. Do whatever it takes to find Joe's murder. Whatever it takes. If things get messy, don't worry. I'll clean them up. Deal? Sure. I'll do my best. Thank you. I trust you to get that ball to the end zone. No. Are you telling stories about the great iron arm again? Wait a minute. Of course. The Milestone's quarterback. Tim Iron Arm <laughs> Thorpe. <laughs> it's a good thing folks usually recognize me sooner. Black said, you coming to breakfast? I'd love to, but I have to go ask for a favor. The investigation required that I ask Jake for a small favor. Or demand it, if worse came to worse. Hits does a boxer take to the head throughout his career? This one's got extra padding, just like Jake. Hey, hi. Hey, focus, will ya? Not the smartest cookie in the jar, nor the most tactful. But do I trust him? No. Do I consider him a friend? Yes. I hope he never feels inclined to hit me. He's twice my size. He's been training with those same shorts for who knows how long. Hey, Jake. Not now, John. I once shredded a bag like that just out of pure rage. The racist brain is so full of hatred that there's no space for trifles such as 
common sense or, say, spelling. But this most cultured writer spotted the error and attempted to correct it, not sure what to make of the outcome. Lizard isn't Yale's doctor. All right, that's enough. <clears throat> Take five. Go on. What, John? What's so important? Have you noticed anything strange about Sonya? I don't know. Yesterday she said she hated the gym. But it also seemed like she wanted to save the place. Do you get any of this? I sure don't. It might not have seemed that way, but she loved her dad. Believe me, I've got reasons to be certain. Could you tell me where Old Erie's headquarters are? What for? No, no, no. You could get me into trouble. No way. If we weren't friends, I'd tell the police you work for O'Leary. Although, if we were friends, you wouldn't hesitate to help me. Tell me, Jake. Are we friends or not? Damned cat. All right. O'Leary's hideout is in the basement of a Chinese restaurant. But I don't even know how to get in. Why are you coaching that guy? Oh, that's right. You don't know. Sonia asked me to run the gym. Well, at least the fun part. As soon as Bobby yells back on his feet, I'll turn him into a champ. I'll make him crush stone. Just you wait. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Couldn't you just stop working for O'Leary? Yeah, I guess I could. Well, I'll see you tonight. See you there. Ronald! The break's over. After 30 hours of work and several beatings, every bone in my body ached for a bed. Now it's my turn. So I went home to recharge. <laughs> because the night ahead was bound to be promising. What do you know about that basement? Well, let me think. Not then. Come on, Jake, for Christ's sake. Drain that little boxer brain. You must know something. I've come.
come to get O'Leary several times, but they always make me wait in the dining room. One day it was so late that the restaurant was closed. They made me call from a payphone in that alley over there to let them know I was here. A few minutes later, O'Leary came out the back door, that red one there. All right, you stay by the payphone. Wait till I'm inside. If you see anyone, call the same number you did that one time. Let it ring twice and hang up. Got it? Screw you! A promising night indeed.